Wouldn't it be great to earn money while you're sleeping? So that your income is not directly tied to your time? Welcome to a new creative makeover our show. Our mission is to help content creators work smart, not hard. We are Lloyd Niaia from Hand Luggage Only, and today we're meeting Elle Linton. Would really love your help and support yeah. to help me figure out how to make some more passive income. I was like averaging about 10,000 page views a month. Now I'm on like about 11,000. I didn't think it was achievable. Yeah. 150% increase. Amazing. Amazing. The accountability from Lord and Yaya was one of the key drivers in my success. Well, it would be nice to tell us a bit more about yourself as well. As a fitness professional, I deliver classes, I do PT, I love to run, I love to cycle, I just love to sweat, basically. <laughs> it might just be easier if I show you, right? <laughs> so we're going to have a squat challenge. Okay. So feet hip width apart, we're going to drop down on count of three, yeah. two, one. Whoa. Let's go down okay. and hold. One thing I didn't expect was to be doing sports in the morning with Al. Oh. Get comfy, get comfy. Okay, I'm good so far. Push those heels back. What is your target audience? What's so, that? my target audience are women who yeah. like to move, or maybe they don't even know they like to move. They want yeah. to find a way that they enjoy to move. Yeah. Um, especially if they like to run and cycle, that's my jam. So when we first met Elle, we met someone that's quite passionate about her fitness, the running, cycling, and also healthy eating. Oh, yeah. She's already doing the right thing. She's already creating great content. She's already sharing her passions with the world She's and it's the just in the yeah and it's just a case of like how does she take it to the next level and I guess that's where we stepped in really right so let's talk money so like in terms of passive income what are the things that you do I don't know about anyone else but you know how they say you make money in your sleep yeah. so every morning I wake up the first thing I do is check like how much I've made I think it's quite hilarious that the first thing Elle does when she gets up in the morning is check her Google Analytics because this is something that we, we all do, do as well I mean there's no shame in it you want to know what's happened so, so I check on um, ad income and then affiliates those are the two ways so in terms of like the split between like, the affiliates and the adverts as well like what is that 50 50 is that like Seasonal. does it fluctuate pretty even but the ad income is more consistent i feel like the more that i put it out there the more i get back if that makes sense yeah, yeah absolutely that's, that's what we find as well isn't it so that's ad income on your website so i post regularly on my blog where i share my knowledge and expertise but then i use facebook pinterest and instagram to support that content the one area that I would love to be able to make more passive income is on social media. Right, okay, yeah. And really help to like convert my audience there. What's probably a good way to go is like looking at the low hanging fruit. You have your website already and it's already established. And I think yeah. a big way to actually increase that income for that passively is also being able to increase your traffic. I could have a clearer strategy which would probably help me get organized. One thing you need to do is create a content plan. You need to know what are people looking for. We can actually work on numbers here. We can actually go back to our audience, ask questions, do polls, look at Google Trends. They gave me a strategy of how to accompany that through creating the content plan and that was the key thing that made it so much easier. So how many times a week do you currently blog? I feel like I aim for three times a week but I'm probably hitting on average once a week. So I'm going to push you to that three times a week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so make sure that you find a frequency that works best for you, but also then look at the quality of the content. What you're really trying to do is not create this unsustainable amount of posting, but you're yeah. trying to create something that would be evergreen. Take what you currently have and what you currently do quite well onto each platform. So for instance, to give you an example, travel tips for Greece. On the blog, it's very affirmative. It's very search, like, what are people looking for? So what are the best times to visit Greece? What are tips I need to know? On TikTok, it's more of like, oh, what are the mistakes I shouldn't make when I visit Greece? And so it's the same content, really, but it's framed differently. Then on Instagram, you go in a different direction as well, where it's like, oh, okay, here are the things I need to know before I visit Greece as well. It's more pretty videos used as a background, like kind of like interjected with like you talking and pretty videos as well. When you create your content on say TikTok and Instagram and Pinterest, is the goal in mind to send people back to the blog? What I would first of all say is that your blog is the, the one platform you own. It's, it's your baby, so to speak, you know? Everywhere else, you're, you're relying on a platform. So in my opinion, it doesn't always have to go back to your blog. It can complement it by being separate, but there should always be a, a longer-term strategy for the blog in itself, because that's something you will always own. So we've discussed lots of different things with you, and I suppose what we really need to figure out is, like, what does success look like for you? You want to see that 
what you're doing is paying off. And I guess that includes what we spoke about with a growth in traffic, um, especially on the blog. We have three tasks for you. Well, the one thing is definitely to get yourself a content plan. And then the second thing is we would like you to at least publish three times a week. If you yeah. can go higher, I'm not going to stop you. <laughs> stop. Yeah. And then the third and final one, pick one topic. And we would like you to create content for the blog yeah. for that. But then create that same content for all of your social media platforms differently. They have to feel native to the platform. Yeah. So I don't know how you feel about that. <laughs> I'm all in. First of all, I created a content plan. My goal is to post Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So I wondered what advice you had on tips for making content suitable. Have you been doing any kind of social listening at all? Have you been listening and engaging with your audience to see what they like? Yes, in the sense that I have been um, immersing myself where people are, so in communities, and then know actually in the sense to ask my audience what they're interested in. That's the side that I actually do have to do more of. As well, don't forget to check Google Trends as well. I mean, the more information, the merrier. <laughs> I 100% have seen an uplift so far, and I did have a quick look back to compare over the last few months. So I think I was like averaging about 10,000 page views a month. Um, and now I'm on like about 11,000 page views a month. So, so. that's 10%. <laughs> About the numbers themselves, it's great that we're on, you're on an upward curve with that, that them numbers coming through as well. But as well, don't think too much into it in the short term. Mm -hmm. This is a long-term goal as well. I work smart, not hard, L. <laughs> <laughs> I was having a look at some stats today. Normally in the first quarter of a year, there's always a really big drop in passive income. But I am so happy to have checked my numbers and to see that I've managed to maintain the same amount of passive income um, coming into the start of the year as I was for the end of the year. So that is a massive success for me. Oh, it's so nice to be back together. So how have you been? Uh, I've been busy. You busy. gave me lots of homework. <laughs> Like, do you feel like there's been like lots of pressure then or have you felt like motivated? I wouldn't say there's been lots of pressure because I did sit down and I did the plan and that really took the pressure off. That motivated me because I knew what I needed to create and I knew when to create it for. And I think the biggest issue that I found was then I didn't make the time to sit down and do the planning again. Okay. So then it got to the point that I was like, oh, now what do I post? <laughs> and I started running around like a headless chicken again, so. <laughs> <laughs> I think one of the biggest takeaways was about how important it is to plan and be organized. But in practice, how well did this work for you in terms of like frequency posting? Did you manage to keep up with it? So I did manage to post three times a week. And to be fair, I was super proud of myself yeah. because I didn't think it was achievable. So we definitely saw some of your Instagram posts. <laughs> we were literally keeping check all the time. Oh we're like, it's another one, <laughs> check, check. So a really great way to increase your passive income is actually by increasing the frequency of your posting as well. And I think with that, you have to really find your own balance. The key is to make it sustainable so you don't get burnt out. Tell us a little bit more about how you transformed your content for different platforms. So I had a blog post that I created all about how to layer for running in cold weather. I created a reel which showed me getting ready for a run and it showed all the different items and why I chose those. Yeah. Um, and then I expanded in the caption. If I'm honest, I did just put the reel straight on Pinterest. <laughs> okay. The only reason why we mentioned that is obviously you want each person to feel like you want secondary. Yeah. It's not like they're seeing something that belongs to someone else, really. Yeah. Don't make the mistake of just copy and pasting the same content across all different platforms. Okay, so what really interests me is how you actually got to the subject matter of layers. Basically, I feel like it's a question that comes up a lot. And was that something you found? Was that like, like a poll you did, or was that just from the comments? I, I love how you just like slipped that in there. Yeah. You're, like, you're like, do you remember? So did you, do you really I just think about this? <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> so that wasn't that was based on content that I had that was already doing well. Yeah. But <laughs> I did follow your advice about the polls. You did. And yeah, because so I was thinking what kind of equipment could I use um, to share like workouts for people? Yeah. So I asked everyone what was their like favorite at home equipment. So I have that, I have all of that feedback ready to create that content. So just uh, so you know. <laughs> you are listening. <laughs> I am listening. <laughs> all right, Elle, let's get into the nitty gritty of the numbers now. Like, can you give us some information or insights on how everything's been going? When it comes to passive income, I would definitely say that I've seen uh, an increase. And I would say it's been more, like, consistent. I mean, I can see these going up here. Yeah. Like, look at so this. So there's literally, like, 100 and... 50% increase. The resources provided to Dido have been amazing. Amazing, exception. I think like she definitely needs to be proud about this because it has been really, really impressive. She's knocked it out of the park. Passive income was something that I was probably looking at it from the wrong way. So I was just thinking of how to make more passive income rather than what I could do at the bottom. So you know one thing you said about like realizing that it's a long game. Mm -hmm. I think that that's so valuable because sometimes we get so stuck in looking at numbers and we're comparing to yesterday. We don't feel like we've done well because it's a small increase, but mm. actually when you go backwards a little further and see the bigger picture, you're like, wow, Absolutely. I've actually done so well and not even realised it. Yeah, I am so impressed with how much you've done. Like, it feels personal to me. <laughs> yeah, like... I definitely think the Creative Makeover was successful. This was just the start of the journey, so to use what I've learned and put it into place and really make the most of the time that I got with Lloyd and Yaya.